asked, how can you use your money to help underserved populations? Our next guest's impact investing efforts have led to affordable housing, jobs, and small business loans in black communities. Joining us now is Ron Homer, Chief Impact Investing Strategist at RBC Global Asset Management. Ron, good to see you. Good to see you, John. So, so tell us how this works exactly. Fixed income uh, is a big part of this, but fixed income isn't what it used to be. No, it's not. But a good portion of the Barclays Ag, which is the standard measure for fixed income investments, are in government guaranteed uh, uh, mortgage backed securities, agencies, treasuries. And what we try to do at RBC is to use a variety of government loan programs on a securitized basis to serve as a proxy as that part of, uh, of the egg. The benefit there is that you not only provide uh, a social benefit in supporting uh, uh, the flow of capital into areas that need it desperately, but you're also making a better spread than you would if you held generic treasuries or generic MBS. Okay, so you say that institutional investors are, are the, the bulk uh, of who you're working with, but are there ways for others to get involved? Sure. Uh, you know, the, the bulk of our investments have come from foundations, banks, uh, public funds, all of whom are trying to align their investments, uh, get a good return, in fact, an excess return, but also uh, build their community because that's important to them long term. Individuals can do the same thing. We, we offer our product in uh, two mutual funds, both of which have uh, retail share classes. What's the difference between impact investing and ESG investing, which w was all the rage before this pandemic hit? Right. That's a good question. So ESG focuses on how a company operates and, and uh, the, the processes it, it uses whether it uses, uh, uh, whether it's environmentally clean or good governance, et cetera. Impact investment focuses more on the output, the product of the company, and does that product actually contribute to society in some meaningful way? And so that's uh, different. I'd say impact investment is a more active process. It's uh, around uh, finding excess returns because a company is providing a product that solves uh, an inefficiency or an imbalance in, in society. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think that, that those type of companies have uh, better survivability, uh, better sustainability over the long term. Ron, how do you measure quality and how do you measure performance and impact investing? I mean, on the one hand, you know, making money is the goal. But on the other, you also want to make sure that you end up having the impact uh, that, that you've been sold in the beginning, right? I agree. I, I actually think the sweet spot for impact investment is when the social benefit actually helps create the excess return. So in that case, you definitely know that you're having an impact and your benefit because because you're making a return from it. Uh, one example is 30% uh, of the Barclays egg is made in mortgage-backed securities. We found over time, and this is a 20-year period through a number of cycles, including the meltdown, that uh, loans to uh, certain types of loans to low and moderate income borrowers and, and particularly minority borrowers actually outperform generic MBS. So there's a case where supporting home ownership in communities that, that need the additional home ownership, needed for wealth creation and stability in their neighborhoods, and at the same time, the investor, if they direct their investments in that way, they're likely to receive a better return than if they bought generic uh, MBS. Ron, there, there's obviously a pretty sharp focus right now on race and racial inequalities in this country right now, social unrest. Is that a big theme for, for your investors? Have you seen interest driven by that in particular? And if so, what do you do to address that? Yes, there are two things that are happening. One, uh, corporations, who many of whom are flush with cash, particularly the tech, tech companies, uh, and cash is now nearly close to zero. Uh, uh, and secondly, they also have a growing interest to see how they can use their balance sheets not only to produce product, but also that excess liquidity they, they have, how can it uh, help further their mission? So we're seeing a lot of interest on the part of corporations who 
are interested in finding ways that they can invest in uh, communities that have been traditionally underserved as part of their diversity and inclusion. inclusion. Also, uh, it's a way to help support the, those essential workers that are essential for those companies to continue to operate, deliver their goods and services.